What's up guys, it's Tom with Ferris Engineering and today we're going to be going over the installation of the front brake cooling kit for the Toyota GR86. What's up guys, it's Tom from the future. Uh, while our installation process for the brake cooling kit uh, on the Toyota GR86 remains mostly unchanged from the original BRZ and FRS models. There are a few key differences that I'm going to highlight and kind of pop in here and there throughout the video to aid Clay and yourself install this uh, seamlessly. So that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so some of the benefits of installing a brake cooling kit, specifically our brake cooling kit on this car, we're looking to reduce brake fade, um, the pesky little uh, rotor cracks that end up forming on the rotors after some uh, hard track sessions, and um, basically the biggest thing is increasing pad life. So that being said, let's jump right into the install. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse of what comes with the kit. Um, I've got it all laid out here on my work table. So first things first, you're gonna get your backing plates um, with your carbon ducts here. It's gonna come with a hardware kit in with the ducts as well. So you're gonna get um, two pieces of foam, you're gonna get six aluminum spacers, you're gonna get six flanged M8 uh, bolts here. Um, you've got pre-cut hoses, you've got a three inch and a two and a half inch hose here. Um, you have your two pancake ducts, you've got your two fog light inlet ducts. Um, right here what you see is our steering rack limiter kit which is included with the brake cooling kit and then each one will use one of these brackets as well. And then coming over you're also going to have four of the two and a half inch clamps and four of the three inch clamps. And then you got your hardware kit here, which is gonna be an assortment of M5 hardware, and then your install tool for your rivet nuts, and it also comes with four longer zip ties. So what you're gonna to need to install this kit, you're gonna need a drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit, an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12, 14, and a 17 millimeter socket. You're gonna need obviously the ratchet, uh, a set of screwdrivers. Um, you're gonna need a pair of side cuts, a two and a half, millimeter Allen wrench and then you're also going to need a four and a five millimeter hex socket. All right so first step um, we're going to have to remove the caliper. There's going to be two 14 millimeter bolts here on the back side so we're going to move those two 14 millimeter bolts and then we will rest the caliper on the LCA. Now what we've got to do you're gonna to wanna to grab your 17 millimeter socket and then we are going to remove, actually you might wanna take the brake pads out first, um, but you're gonna remove this, uh, this bracket right here for the caliper. All right, now we'll set these aside and we'll move to the next step. Now what we're gonna do is we need to remove the rotor. Um, depending on how long the car sat, um, if it sees rain, salt, that sort of thing, it might be harder to get off. So you have a couple options here. If it pulls off, great. If not, rubber mallet, or you can use the two bolt holes here. Now, after you have the rotor removed, there's going to be three 12 millimeter bolts here that we're gonna to need to remove to remove this backing plate to make room for our backing plate. All right, so now you're gonna to wanna to determine which backing plate you're after. Um, I'm on the driver's side, so this is the one that I want. And basically how these are going to install, you're going to use the supplied M8 hardware through there, and then you're going to use one of these black anodized spacers on the back side, and then we'll put these on just hand tight for right now. All right, now, um, as you can see, that speed sensor wire in there is actually touching um, part of the carbon duct there on the back side. You're going to want to mark this location, and then we will remove uh, the backing plate completely. And then this is where we're going to install our, uh, our foam that is supplied. We're gonna wrap that around the wire just to prevent any kind of abrasion in the future. Now, if you can see that back in there, um, that is properly installed foam. That way it's in between, it's a barrier layer in between that carbon duct. You're gonna wanna tuck that thing up in there so there's at the least amount of movement as possible just so there's no chance of future um, harm there. Now we're going to use our five millimeter hex and we're going to tighten these bolts. 
Now after we have the backing plate fully installed, the next step is going to be to reinstall our rotor. Now once we have the rotor reinstalled, we are going to put on two of our lug nuts. Just hand tie, it's fine. But you wanna make sure that the rotor spins freely and that is not rubbing on um, the backing plate that you just installed. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to spin your rotor, make sure it is not rubbing on the backing plate, and then you're gonna to wanna to do this at full lock in both directions. I won't bore you with that part of the install, but you will wanna turn it all the way left and turn it all the way right and do the same thing just to verify that it's not going to rub. Now, um, if for some reason you do have any kind of rubbing at, at either full lock angle or, or in the middle, this, this backing plate is fairly malleable, so you can just kind of bend it out of the way. Um, just bend it just enough so it's not rubbing. You don't want it too far away, but you don't want it too close. Now, um, once we get the rotor on, it's time to put our uh, brake caliper bracket back on, and then we'll put our pads back in as well as the caliper back on. Now, just for you guys that are wondering, um, when you put the bracket back on, those 17 millimeter bolts, you're gonna wanna torque those to 59 foot-pounds. And then the other, um, for the actual brake caliper, you're gonna do to about 19 foot-pounds. Now what we need to do is remove the inner fender liar here from the shock tower. Um, there's gonna be an assortment of pop rivets in here, so you can use your, your, uh, your rivet um, tool here to get those out, or a flathead. There is one here that you're gonna need a Phillips, um, so just be mindful there. All right. So basically our first order of business is to make sure we have this entire area in front of the radiator um, and behind the bumper uh, freed up. So that means you're gonna have to remove the splash shield that covers this area. And then this kind of filler panel slash uh, support thing that kind of goes into the bumper. Uh, You'll have 10 millimeter bolts and a bunch of clips holding that on. Go ahead and remove that. If you want, remove the aluminum engine under panel so that uh, you don't keep hitting your head as you're trying to see what you're doing up here, as I did. But once you have this all accessed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the factory uh, air ducts. All right, so here we are on the driver's side of the inside of the bumper. And at the end of, or the, the far end of the grill on either side, you're gonna have these kind of air ducts that kind of keep all the air kind of going through the cooling stack. Uh, what we wanna do is remove these. You'll have three Phillips head screws, one up top here. You'll have one down here, which you can't see, and then one in the back, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Basically go ahead and remove those, and then we're going to install our um, air ducts for the brake cooling kit. All right, so here is the new Varus Engineering uh, brake cooling duct. It's going to install in the exact same way that the OEM duct you had in there came out. And you want to make sure that this other OEM kind of air guide or diverter, you want the foam to be behind it. Okay, once you got it lined up, go ahead and reinstall the factory Phillips head screws uh, into the same factory location. <laughs> now this part of the install, we are on the driver's side, like I said. Um, we do have to remove, I don't know if you can see it there. We do have to remove um, the windshield washer tank. Now we do have, there are options on the market for replacement. I believe P-Tuning makes a nice kit. Um, there are also fluid bags that a lot of people use at this point as well. But to remove this, there's a clip that looks like I already removed here, and there's a couple bolts, um, so we'll remove that. Okay, so now, um, I forgot to remove this other fender liner right here. You will wanna remove that one as well. It's just a few pop clips as well. Now right here, that hole is the one that we're gonna open up with our 3 8 drill bit. Um, now what you can do, you can use a shot back just to make sure that the metal fillings don't go all over the place. Um, and then you can even touch it up with some touch up paint to make sure there's no further rust or anything like that. So using your rivet nut install tool, 
your 9 16 wrench in a 10 millimeter, we are going to install a rivet nut, one of the supplied rivet nuts into that hole we just drilled. So there is your properly installed rivet nut. Next step, we want to take this piece that we removed. Um, there's a slight section right here that we are going to need to remove so that the, the pancake duct can sit flush. I'm going to use a razor blade and a steady hand. Um, there are other ways of doing this, but it's better to start small than it is to start big. So after the cut, um, essentially that's what you get there and that should allow for the pancake duct to sit flush. You can obviously test fit this. Um, once we get the bracket put on here and the pancake duct, it'll get, be a little bit easier to tell on fitment. Now, once you get the, the black uh, engine cover fender liner put back in, whatever you want to call it, you're going to take one of your smaller brackets with your 20 millimeter button head and the small washer that's supplied for the M6. And then we're going to install it in the hole that we put the rivet nut in. Now we will install the pancake duct. It sits right on that bracket. So luckily that's sitting pretty flush right there. Um, this bracket will be angled a slight bit and you want to make sure the larger part of the pancake duct is facing forward. And then we use one of our M5 nuts right there. And I'm just doing these hand tight and I can mess with fitment later. Um, but just to get it in place, this is what I'm going to do. So there is the pancake duct with the bracket installed. Um, these are hand tight right now. Obviously, um, that is your M5 nut holding that on there. And it looks like my, my cutting worked pretty well back there. Um, once I get this tight, we shouldn't have any issues with fitment. So on to the next step. All right, so for you GR86 specific owners, uh, here's a little bit of a close up. You guys can check out kind of the orientation of how we have the duct and the bracket in terms of it being swept forward a little bit and uh, how it's installed so that we don't have any rubbing with our wheel and tire setup. Back on the GR86, real quick, uh, one little fitment tidbit. Uh, on the driver's side, I'm sorry, passenger side, you're gonna notice that there is a tab here. This metal tab normally is pointed directly uh, towards the outside of the car. Um, and you'll notice obviously that if it was doing that, it'd interfere with the pancake duct. So um, you can either cut that off or you can just bend it back like I did. If you cut it off, uh, feel free to basically wire tie the harness to uh, this guy here, this hole here, and then it will be fine. Now this step isn't necessary by any means. Um, it just helps kind of uh, increase the longevity of your hoses. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put tape around it. I cut it into segments, um, and then that will help go around the different ducts. And now you're going to take your three inch hose clamps, and then you are going to put this on the fog light duct and into the pancake duct. So there is the three inch hose installed on the pancake duct as well as the fog light inlet duct. And now we'll do the same thing. We'll move on to the back side here and we will do the two and a half inch hose. And then you're gonna want to go around the back side of the strut there and then into your um, carbon duct. Hey guys, Tom again. Um, a quick note, basically, um, with the steering rack limiters being included within the kit, I just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. At the time of the filming of this video, we have a moderately aggressive setup of 17 by nine plus 47 offset wheels, uh, Titan 7, shout out Titan 7 for making some excellent wheels, uh, with some 245-40-17-RE-71-RS tires. Uh, we did find that without the steering rack limiters, um, in or installed that we had a bit of rubbing on the pancake duct. That being said, if you have something close to this setup, you will probably need to install um, all of the steering rack limiters that are included in the kit. So that will be three on the right side and three on the left side. And if you need to know how to install that kit, go ahead and pop on over to our steering rack limiter install video. Very quick and simple. And uh, yeah, so once you have that done, get right back into the install. All right, so the orange hose is routed. Um, like I said, you kind of go underneath there and then I zip tied it to the LCA. Um, after that, you are done. You will want to put the fender liner back on. And as you can see here, you might need to trim um, a little bit just to get it fit back into place with that pancake duct on there. Um, but the trimming should not be too terrible. Well guys, that includes the install. Uh, now I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to do the exact same thing 
but that side I'm not gonna have to remove the windshield washer uh, reservoir, so it's not gonna take me quite as long. Uh, but make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook. If you had any suggestions for any newer videos coming up, if you have any suggestions for videos now, uh, what you would like to see, what you would like to see us do better, we always appreciate the feedback, so make sure you hit that down in the comment section below, and we look forward to the next video. Until next time.